Nintendo Show, and I am coming to you live on Facebook, so if you can join us in the comments, that'd be wonderful. Share with me what's on your mind. We're here at the ESPN Sports Festival, virtually, and at a wonderful symposium. People got to learn a lot about Hawaii sports fans, and, you know, even though we've been around since 2012, this is still a growing brand, and I just welcome in all the new uh, the newbies that have heard about Hawaii sports fans and, you know, are going to join us, who knows, one day, or maybe even in two and a half weeks, for what's going to be an amazing tour, the I Love LA Tour, which is also appeared on ESPN 1420. If you are in the islands, aloha, aloha. Uh, join, uh, mahalo for joining us tonight here at Hawaii sports fans. So if you are new to Hawaii sports fans, you probably heard a lot about us this past week at the Virtual Sports Fest. Hope you are able to join some of the really cool demonstrations and uh, the wonderful vendors that were lined up for this event. I know that a lot of our um, affiliates or people you see, maybe sponsors uh, at UH Games or something, or maybe even just stores you drive by in YPO Gentry or something. You know, this virtual sports fest has brought together the entire community and it's really an honor to be a part of it. And I'm really happy that I had the chance to sit down with Dave Kawada and talk about uh, my adventures, uh, the ultimate sports and travel uh, guy. I don't know. I forget what, what I was labeled. I have to go and look. But the words ultimate and sports and travel were in it. And I love those words because they uh, perfectly describe Hawaii sports fans. And, you know, during the pandemic, I was able to, uh, or here at Hawaii Sports Fans, we were all able to um, really find different ways to grow this brand, even though... You know, we couldn't travel. <clears throat> it's, oh, it was called, excuse me, the ultimate travel and sports experience. And that's the other word. And I purposely told them to put that word in there. So I should have remembered the ultimate sports and travel experience because that is what I want to do. I want to give you that experience. I want to help you get that experience because, sure, a lot of people are like, you know, since I started Hawaii Sports Fans, people are like, I could do that myself. And I'm like, Okay, yeah, you can. This is for people that want to do it a different way. Like, you know not how many times every day, like even things that I purchase, and this is a peeve of mine, so maybe I, but this is just the honest truth. I buy so many tickets a year. And ladies and gentlemen, then let me just tell you, if you are thinking about prices from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s even, or even the 2010s, which are behind us, you have to step into the new world, and and it, it's just a painful truth. Our, um, you know, our 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 wallets are, you know, being uh, pried open much more than they were back in the day. And I just want you to be prepared for that. And I don't say that in, um, in a derogatory way because I'm not saying oh people need to you you need to learn how to drop a lot of bills if you want to go to a game. Because that's definitely not the point of Hawaii sports fans. My, uh, I want to be as inclusive as possible because as, for me as a kid, as a kid, and I, I was thinking about this, and I think about this all the time. Uh, when I was like in middle school, so Evan Lee, who played for UH Wahine, Rainbow Wahine. So shout out to the Rainbow Wahine who finally got a season coming up at the University of Hawaii. Uh, but her mom, Ingrid Lee, was one of the assistants on our team at Kamehameha. And... I remember always telling her, man, I wish I could go to these games, watch the Wahine on the road. I mean, I'm just like a middle school kid, but, you know, still I'm already like, man, I wish I could do this or like go to, um, you know, Cleveland where they had it. And I was like, my parents are like, no, that's definitely not going to happen. Obviously, um, I'm just a kid, but little do they know I'm still a kid. And then I got older, but then I still got to do all these things that I wanted to do. Right. So that is at the end of the day what Hawaii sports fans is built on. And I talked to Dave Kawada about this, but it's really my childhood. And it's really all those things that I wanted to do as a kid. And just saying to myself, you know what? I'm just going to do it one day. You know, I'm just going to go for it because why not? And what else do I have? And then I kept saying that over and over and over and over again 
to the point where I've now gone to six Super Bowls, seen the NBA Finals trophy handed out twice, once in Cleveland, once at Oakland Arena in the very last game. I got to see the World Series trophy handed out at Dodger Stadium to the Astros in a year that will never be forgotten. Obviously, there's controversy surrounding that season. But forever, I get to say I was there. You know, I got to be there at the Kentucky Derby in 2013. I mean, I, I happened, I was uh, working, serving on an NCAA committee in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is right there close to Kentucky. And I uh, drove to Bloomington, Indiana, where my uh, classmate, or my roommate from college, my freshman year roommate, he was working on two doctorates because, you know, we're bastard kids, so we do things hard ways, right? We always, I, um, you know, we always want to have multiple interests. So me and Gabe got along very well, and he was uh, going for astronomy or astrophysics and music, and he even composed something. Anyways, that's just my roommate, but that's Bloomington, Indiana, which already is a great place. If you can go and watch the Hoosiers play, but that's even just that's just close to Louisville, Louisville, which they say Louisville, Kentucky as well. So I got to go to Louisville and I borrowed Gabe Searsucker because, you know, you have to dress pretty nice to go to the Kentucky Derby. And I got to see. Um, so if you've never been to the Kentucky Derby, it's not just one race. It's like several races. And like the, the Derby is like the 12th race of like several, it's 13 or something. It's not even the last. It's very strange. But the one that we always think about, the one with the main horses. So that was an experience for me right there. And I, I drove by myself. It was raining. There are all these crazy Louisville, University of Louisville students in the middle. So around the track, you know, that's where like a few more, you know, people dress nicely are kind of in the, in the grandstands. But in the middle, you have like Louisville kids that are like just sloshed and totally trashed and muddy. And that was cool, too, to see that and not get too close. I did not want to get involved in that. But especially because I'm wearing my seersucker because I want to look good. Because, you know, people are drinking their mint juleps and they're just enjoying themselves. And that's the, time, that's the type of thing for me as a human being, that an experience that I love to draw back on and brings me happiness. Right? And at the end of the day, that's what it is about too. It's about doing what makes you happy. If you really enjoy going to games, if you really enjoy that feeling of getting on a plane, because I really love that. I love traveling. You know, I love going to new places. Uh, I just came back from Copenhagen and Amsterdam and Hamburg, Malmo, Sweden, all these places. I still think about them every day. You know, I still run them through my brain about how much fun I had. I'm just like, man, I can't believe those places exist in the world. You know, I can't believe that I never knew. I never been there my whole life. And then one day I got to be there and I got to experience it. And it was so cool. And that experience will always live with me. So those are what I live for, those experiences. And at Hawaii Sports Fans, I think it's really special because not only do I want these experiences, but I want to bring them particularly to my people, local people, people from Hawaii, people that grew up like me, like my parents, like my grandparents, like my aunties and uncles. That's the kind of people that I'm connecting at Hawaii sports fans, you know, and you don't have to be that. You don't have to be my auntie or uncle or like them or like my family. You can be from anywhere in the world. And that's the great thing. But Hawaii is always at the focal point of this, of this company, of this business, because our values like aloha, lokahi, like being pono, doing what's right. That those are at the core of Hawaii sports fans. So that's why Hawaii sports fans has the word Hawaii. Because of course I'm super proud to be from Hawaii. I'm extremely proud to be Hawaiian. That as that goes without being said. But also this this company is about that. It's about taking things to the next level, but doing it our way, doing it how we do local style, how we do it the Hawaiian way. And I'm really excited because I have a great event coming up and we finally, after this pandemic, get to f get back onto the field and we're going to do it in style. And we add it on today. So there's a little bit of bad news, but there's some good news. So the bad news first is SoFi Stadium, unfortunately, um, has stopped doing tours for now, um, probably due to COVID. And, you know, the season's coming up and they're, they're probably trying to figure out how to run games now and keep the. But they had tours going and that was the plan. And, you know, I talked to them about doing the tour but unfortunately me versus sofi is just me so i was like okay well, we're gonna come up with something else to do and of course i had an amazing backup plan and um it involves a local sports figure as well because we always want that hawaii tie-in and um it's going to be in the form of a minor league baseball game in the inland empire and it's going to feature len sakata and you might re remember that name he was the second asian american ever to play in the major leagues which is amazing already 
um, to be a trailblazer in your sport. Uh, he also won a World Series with the Baltimore Orioles, and he was the shortstop when Cal Ripken started his his run. I mean, how cool is that? So those are some cool trivia surrounding Len Sakata, but also he is a manager. Uh, he's been a very successful coach. He's like a Hall of Famer. His jersey has been retired, and we're going to get to see him coach uh, the San Jose Giants as they play the Lake Elsinore Storm in minor league baseball. Of course, there's going to be food. There's going to be fun. It's minor league baseball, and that alone is an experience. Minor league baseball is you can do stuff in minor league baseball games that you wouldn't see in major league baseball games, right? Because they can do a lot of, you know, really cool um, side attractions and, you know, really cool uh, themes and promotions. And we're going to take advantage of them. So uh, let me know if you want to be a part of this tour. Now we're going to have four games in four days. I'm super excited. Friday night, starting with the Dodgers home run seats. Three more people just signed up for that. Three more people. Um, it's going to be amazing. This Dodgers home run season. I'm so excited. You probably saw the video. Food, drink, uh, somebody serves you. The world defending world champion Los Angeles Dodgers who are looking really tough right now and probably will bring it home again are, are the favorites, no doubt, especially adding Max uh, Scherzer, Trey Turner uh, from the Washington Nationals who has been playing exceptionally well, both of them, especially Trey Turner. I mean, the Dodgers keep loading up. I mean, Mookie Betts and... They just have just a great lineup, and it's exciting enough to watch the Dodgers play and watch this roster and all this talent on the field. But to do it from the home run seats, one of the best locations in Dodger Stadium, you know, one of the most iconic parks in America. Shane Agno has just called it the Sheesh Tour. I love that. Yeah, it is a Sheesh Tour. Sheesh, because not only are we going to go from Friday to that amazing experience on, on Friday night, but... Saturday, we're going to the Rose Bowl. We're going to get some food, drink, fun, hang out with our friends at the Rose Bowl in the parking lot. But, you know, we're going to be indoors for a little bit as well because I'm always thinking about us and how we can have the best experience. So get into the game. We're going to have a great day. We're going to go to, you know, Koreatown, the best place to eat Korean food. I could be in the world, and I've been to Seoul. So I'm not, you know, I love Korean food, but you know, Koreatown is amazing in Los Angeles. It's probably the best. Um, and we're going to get some of that. And then Sunday, we're going to go to the Inland Empire and watch Len Sakata coach Lake Elsinore against Lake Elsinore, the San Jose Giants. So if you're a Giants fan, you will still probably like the giveaway because there's a giveaway that, oh, and there's giveaways. At the Dodgers game, we're going to have an LAFC giveaway. And you know my team, LAFC. Duh. <laughs> this is why I had the flag behind me all the time, LAFC, because I love this team. And it's also their night. It's the theme night for them at at um Alon at um at Dodger Stadium. So that's amazing. But back to Len Sakata, who is also a Kalani High School alum. Yes, just like Shane Agno said, go Falcons. That'll be cool. Yes, Kalani High School representation. There's also going to be a giveaway at that game. It's going to be a hat. And because like Elsinore Storm is the low A affiliate of the San Diego Padres, it'll be in their colors. But it, it still look really cool. Even if you're a Giants fan. Um, you know, because free stuff is always cool. So that'll be Sunday. And then Monday, we're going to end our tour with Shohei Otani. <laughs> I love you, Shohei. And the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Okay. I've, I obviously did not have anything to do with that name. Versus the New York Yankees from the Bronx. All the way from New York City. Yo, yo, yo. It's going to be amazing. I, that's all I can say. And uh, we're going to have food, drink, and adult beverages as well for that game. Um, and that'll close an amazing and really remarkable tour. Um, I'm quoting uh, Mr. or Dr. Shikumo, uh, who comes on. This will be his fourth tour coming. Fourth or fifth, actually, with Hawaii sports fans. And talking to him on the phone about you know all these updates. And he's like, Wayne, you really outdid yourself again. And I can say that. I, I really did. And with him, we've done an amazing adventures. We went, we went driving on the ice in Minnesota. I mean, that's the kind of things I did with him in Wisconsin. I mean, that's the kind of memories I want to build. And that's the kind of thing we're doing at Hawaii Sports Fans. So uh, Shane says, beat UCLA. Yes, Bru Bruin beat down. That game is uh, you know going to be exciting because I really – I'm excited for Coach, um, you know, Coach Graham and this team. And I'm not only excited for Coach Graham and this team, but also 
the returnees and the new guys that we have. And if you listen to the new podcast last week, the Rainbow Wrap Up, maybe I can have Brother Shane. I want him to join. So maybe I can have him join tomorrow. Uh, we started it to, on Thursdays. The call, call the coaches on ESPN, and we've been going. We went on, me and um, Sean Iman, we recorded our show last week. Brother Shane, uh, Brother Sean. Uh, it was just me and Sean last week, and we, we talked about a lot about what Coach Graham said in uh, the uh, Call the Coach, which he was really excited about being there. He was really high on the team, and he, he named some players like True Edwards, Ote Baker. So if, he, if, if, if he's naming these guys and Shevin and um, Darius also appeared and talked about these guys, you know, that's exciting to have guys that are already going to be impact players. And that's why I love the Juco players too that we – I love Juco players because uh, there's so much development that goes on at 19 and 20. And, and, and later on, you know, like kids, and this is not a PSA, but really nobody, not everybody in high school is going to, you know, peak right there. And, and not to say that even the best athletes peak, they keep getting better. But, you know, there's so many athletes in high school that uh, don't even know that they're great athletes at and, and discover that for themselves. Sometimes it takes Shuko, sometimes it takes a few years. And those are the, that those dime is in the rough, right? That at UH we're always trying to get. So um, we're really excited about what's to come there with that game. And hopefully, um, you know, Hawaii gets that big win on the road. Another win on national TV would be nice. Uh, the last game was obviously the New Mexico Bowl. I'm going to have my vlog out soon so we can go back and look at that game. I was there um, in Dallas, Frisco, Texas. Uh, it was the New Mexico Bowl, but it was in Dallas. And uh, it was an amazing night to see Hawaii play well and really take it to the University of Houston, which is a high mid-major program and which is an extremely respectable team, which I saw got some votes in the top 25. Uh, Boise as well got votes. I think they're the only Mountain West team, unless anybody can correct me. Uh, Hawaii did not get any uh, votes that I saw in the preseason poll, but I'm not surprised about that. But in a way, I'm, I'm a little surprised that UH hasn't received, even though, I, like I said, I disregard all the national stuff. But, I mean, last year winning a bowl game on the mainland, on television, national TV, against University of Houston, which is a good program, a team whose basketball team was in the final four, you know, like th this is like a, a good program that um, is basically like a BCS program, but in the mid majors and one of those teams that's on the cusp of probably becoming a major team in, in the, in the uh, conference realignment and um, other shuffle that will probably take place very soon in uh, college football. But that was a great win for university of Hawaii. So I'm actually kind of surprised that, um, you know, we there was no uh, wasn't more respect for Hawaii. But at the same time, I know Coach Graham doesn't care about that and he shouldn't because he knows he still has to prove himself, too. He has to um, really make that name for himself. He's already brought a trophy to Hawaii, which is a beautiful, ornate trophy like with Navajo design on it. It looks really cool. And that's what we got at the New Mexico Bowl. Um, but he knows that it's a conference championship. And, and that's what we were we're missing. Like we need to. Take down Boise. That's that should be the goal for University of Hawaii is taking down Boise and and um, you know uh, reclaiming itself at the top. So, excuse me, that's going to be a tall order, obviously. But looking forward to what's to come. Obviously, only two and a half weeks away from that first game at UCLA, and then Portland State, and then we're we're hoping, you know, there will be fans there. And the team, are, uh, via at the AD, David Matlin, at UH announced uh, vaccinations will be mandatory. So that sounds like at least there a good glimmer of hope that there will be fans. You have to be vaccinated, but at least you can get in. Uh, and I, like we said, we encourage people to be vaccinated. That's something I talk about on the show. And, um, you know, I, and I think it'll make it for a safer environment at the games as well. Um, there at uh, T.C. Ching Field. So we'll see how that goes. Congrats to Kelly, our boy Kelly. He, he texted and said he got the call. So Kelly got the call. Uh, I don't know how anyone, any, any of you got the call. And we've been talking about this, the call from uh, the school, talking about whether they you would be getting um, season tickets or not. 
or a chance to purchase season tickets. So congrats to Kili. He'll be at TC Ching. I still haven't got the call, so I'm hoping maybe I'll get the call soon. Um, but, you know, you never know. You have to um, – you just got to wait, and I'm being patient. And I know I have eight people, uh, or I had eight total in my group at Aloha Stadium, and it's scary because it, it'll be very difficult to get all of us into the, new, into the new stadium. And this has been such a tradition for us to be able to be together every week at Aloha Stadium. And, that, and, and that's another part of that experience. And that's why everything ties back to what you can do off the field. Not what the teams are doing on the field, but what kind of event is this? If it causes me to fly to Europe, if it causes me to spend time with my my family and friends, then I th it's worthwhile, right? Then the, the, the event means even more than just being there as a fan. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be a great game nonetheless, and I'm hoping that uh, we're all able to um, make it to as many games as possible this year, whether it's CC Ching or whether it's on the road. So UCLA, hope to see you there, Hawaii sports fans. But if you can make it, if you can't make it to our tour, um, you can be there for you know some of our events. Like we said, our Dodgers home run seats. I'll squeeze you in. Let me know our Angel Suite. Let me know, uh, or coming to see uh, Len Sakata with us, coach the San Jose Giants, which will be a new exciting thing. Um, but all of this started with. Me in 2012, kind of with a crazy idea. And just to kind of give you a background for me, you know, I, I graduated from college. I was a computer science and economics double major. I minored in math. Um, I was like, I guess I want to go to grad school. So I got into a PhD program in economics at University of Hawaii Manoa. And then the night before, I was like, too scared to go. Like, legitimately. Like scared because I thought I'd be tying myself to this for the rest of my life, which I probably would. So I'm kind of glad I didn't go. But, you know, for me personally and also, um, you know, building a, a career, building a life, I wanted to be centered around something I love, period. And Hawaii Sports Fans is around that, is built around passion, built around love. So it's not about... You know, I, it's funny because I, I think to myself, Hawaii Sports Fans LLC. I added that at the end, LLC. It, it is an LLC. <laughs> it's a real LLC. And I did that on purpose because I wanted this to, to be legit. I don't want people thinking, like, who's this guy, like, just taking my money? You know, it is a legit thing. But um, it's, you know, more of an official thing. So people know that it's safe. It's, um, you know, and there are there are people who are even notable in Hawaii that are travel that I've heard from people that have gone with me that maybe have still that maybe they are still old money from other vendors. So I know it's scary. I know even reputable vendors people have trouble with, but I've been around for 10 years, never had trouble with anybody. And I say that proudly. I don't say that in boastfully because it is nerve wracking. It's extremely nerve wracking to put these tours together because I want the best and I want them all to go well. And I want them all to go like how they go in my mind. And usually they almost always go even better. So uh, and two and a half weeks from now, we'll have a chance to do that. But if you didn't have a chance to see ESPN Virtual Sports Fest, here's some of my interview with Dave Kawada. And, you know, I want to talk about it as well because I think, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's something that I, I, I want people to understand when they, when they think about Hawaii sports fans, understand our story. And I talk about my grandma all the time, and it is because being raised in Hawaii, going with my grandma to games and her love of traveling as well. And her, you know, she got to be there for our very first tour in San Diego. So that's what's important. That's what Hawaii Sports Fans is about. It's not just about this podcast. It's not just or a live stream. It's not just about, you know, um, being, you know, this, 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 this kid that likes to just talk about games or talk about experiences, but it really is at the same time it is all of those things you know so i want i want people to realize just how important this is to me but how um you know it's important to just my background and my story and how you all can be a part of it as well so here's dave kawada you know talking to me at the espn virtual sports fest I can get it. every time I do. All right, we're happy to have Wayne Koito, the founder of Hawaii Sports Fans LLC. And if there's any person or a company with that name to be a part of our sports festival, 
here it is because the <laughs> name says it all. Hawaii Sports Fans LLC. Wayne, thanks for coming on with us and being a part of this sports festival. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So you have been just about every place on this planet. You should be with Jeff Bezos going into another uh, planet by this because you've been everywhere. But before we get to all of that, give us a little summary about the company Hawaii Sports Fans LLC. So about 10 years ago, I was kind of hanging out with my my uh, parents in the living room. And I think for a lot of people my age, uh, upper thirties are pushing certain numbers. You know, when I graduated from college, I graduated right into a economic downturn. So alternative ways of living my life were already on the table for forced upon me. So I think sitting back and having that luxury really, um, even though I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with my life to have my parents be like, hey, well, you like to do this. And I don't know if it was really offhanded, but they're like, you like to travel, take people with you and go to games. So that's kind of what it started from because and for me, like going to games, like always captivates something in me, always inspires me. Um, and the games get bigger for me. You know, now that I've gone to so many Super Bowls and big events, uh, it's like that, that, that bug in me still wants more, but I would say it does. That bug still does want more. And then, and I did sit down with my parents. I remember I, I was like really depressed and actually depressed too. And I, I just to be straight up, I think we should talk about, you know, what makes us happy is important because a lot of us suffer from a lot of things that you know, make the world very blue. We'll just put it that way. And this is not about mental health, but at the same time it is. And I'm glad that more athletes are talking about it. I'm glad Simone Biles is talking about it. But for me personally, too, I had to find what made me happy. You know, I lived my life playing sports from when I was three, four. I was already competitive swimming and into college. And when it's all over, you have to kind of figure out, you have to kind of reinvent yourself. What kind of thing do you want to do with your life? And if you love sports, you might not be get to be an athlete forever. You might not get to be Tom Brady and be able to, um, you know, just continue to play at a high level for so long in your life. And Tom Brady's older than me, by the way, which I love, which I totally love. I want him to keep playing. It makes me feel like a kid. Um, but, you know, for the rest of us, we want to be around the game, but how can we? And coaching was on the table for me for different sports, but I think for me, being a fan, ultimately, at the end of the day, saying my two favorite things, uh, that's what I love. And like I said, I can point back to being in seventh grade, being in eighth grade, and being excited about going to games, being excited about or fantasizing about going on trips to the mainland by myself or with my family or whatever. I'm just a kid, but it's just like, that's what I want to do. So I'm glad ESPN were able to talk about it because, you know, I think it's really important to, to, to see where I'm coming from as well. Same time. Hawaii sports fans is not there just for me it's for me to share that experience with others and particularly people from Hawaii and that's why I call it Hawaii sports fans because I'm Hawaiian I'm I'm local I went to Kamehameha I played sports I being a sports fan is uh, what I'm really passionate about now so that is the core of it helping people to have that experience um, and now also you know being able to connect with them via a podcast uh, via live streams so I want to take the relationships um, that we have and build upon those as well that I've created with, you know, being a fan myself and going to so many UH games and going to so many games and being visible in the community, in the sports community. I think ultimately that's what I want to build upon is how can we continue to go to games together, but also build upon our experiences and take them to the next level. Um, so that's what Hawaii sports fans is, is aims to do is, is provide that service to people. And I know, you know, like I was saying, these are experiences. This is a service. Like on our trip that we're going to do coming up, like I can be honest and say like I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it without Hawaii sports fans. And this is my company. You know, I got to pay for all of this myself. And I, I don't I, – I, I'm not getting rich off of this at all. Quite the opposite actually. But, you know, that's not important. And I said this from the very beginning. I'm building this brand, first of all. I'm building this lifestyle. I'm looking for people that are, are like me. I want to humanize this experience. I want to make this something that is not about, oh, we're just going games to, we're building an experience together that we're going to talk about forever. And that's what this is upcoming in UCLA as well.
It's more than just going and watching games. Yes, it is. Yes, it is drinking. Yes, it is eating food that we like. Yes, it is going and search for the perfect ube cookie in Seattle or something. Yes, all of those things are a part of this. And yes, it is a service when someone like me can craft this whole experience for you. It's absolutely, that's what it is. And that's why I love this company because I would absolutely be one of the clients as well. I can't be a client because I'm too busy underwriting everything anyway. So I'm basically the, the main client, but I'm also somebody who's passionate about it for myself as well. And I'm excited. I'm personally excited about what's going what's to happen on this tour. So I want other people to have that as well. So if you're going to go to UH versus UCLA, a lot of people travel by themselves, for instance, right? So I don't expect them to want to come on a whole tour. But now I'm giving people that opportunity to also come on these amazing side trips with us, going to Dodger game in the home run seats, going to a suite. You can't do that by yourself. It's just really hard. And if you do, you have to have a lot of money. And if you do, great. And you probably don't need Hawaii sports fans. Maybe you can use my advice still to how to spend your money the most effectively. Uh, but Hawaii sports fans is about bringing those experiences that you really can't do by yourself and being able to do them by your, um, you know, with other people. So I'm excited about this UCLA. We're going to connect so many UH fans, but we're also going to have fun going to different games and stuff. And, and that's what I want to do. That's something I've been thinking about as a kid. That's something I thought about. Being wanting to be, oh, I see Derek Branch there. Aloha to our Derek Branch. I'll be there. He'll be at UCLA. You know, watching him as a kid. 92 was probably my first year as a, you know, as a fan, really understanding, you know, football, really getting it um, more than just rah, 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 and cheering with my family and making confetti. But um, from then, I wanted to go. I was like, man, I remember watching the Holiday Bowl at home with my, you know, with my family and, and being like, man, San Diego's not that far. Yeah, we could have went. Um, but of course, I'm just a kid again. So I got to wait, wait it out a few decades. And eventually I got to be in that stadium how many times? And take, take um, you know, Hawaii football fans. So um, all in good time. For if you're a passionate sports fan, you've had that moment when you're watching a game. You're like, man, I wish I was there. Yeah, you know, we can't go to everything. We can only do so much. But Hawaii sports fans, um, let me give you the opportunity to do those things. Like so many people say, you've helped me check off a bucket list item, like go to UH game. So, you know, or go to UH game on the East Coast. People say like, oh, I can go West Coast. I'm, I'm okay going to the West Coast, but I'm a little scared, you know? So we've already been to Washington, D.C. We've been to Boston. We've been to New York City several times. We've been to the Bronx. We've even walked in the Bronx and gotten hot dogs on the street because that's all a part of the experience. But that's what I want to bring. How this island boy, I'm just an island boy. You know, I'm just a kid running up for signatures, um, <laughs> running up for autographs at the Pro Bowl. You know, that's the same drive that I have that, um, you know, runs Hawaii sports fans. But where have you? I, I get very emotional, obviously, when I think about those times because so much of my life is tied. My life memories are tied to my sports memories as well. And being a kid. I'm looking forward to the Pro Bowl and shout out to my uncles who always provided tickets. And I got to just see and be up close with a lot of great athletes and see other people hound athletes. Like, it's just funny. Just thinking back my Pro Bowl memories, like Howie Long getting yelled at. And I don't know why that's funny because he was one of the few guys that would yell back. But that was what it was like being an NFL fan and a local kid on Oahu where we had the Pro Bowl. And I made the most of it, man. That whole week, you know, I always had my family, like you know, my friends. We try and go to as many events as possible. And, of course, the Pro Bowl itself. After the game, going to the north end zone. You know, I'll never forget Randy Moss, just like a blur running past me looking for his car. And be like, Randy Moss. Or like, you know, Aeneas Williams, who was just inducted into the NFL or the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He gave me his gloves. In a sea of children, he just reached out to me and handed me his gloves. And he signed it. Aeneas Williams, who's now in the Hall of Fame. These are the memories that are built upon Hawaii sports fans. So these are the things that I would go home and show my grandma and be how proud I was of them. So that's an another part. That's another layer of all of these things. But, you know, we all have a lot of those same stories. So Hawaii sports fans is a gathering place as well. So I want other people to, you know, come together so we can learn from each other, but also be like, hey, I remember that. I remember that time. And I think that it's um, it's fun because we have similar memories. Uh, Derek also says it's a shame that Pro Bowl isn't here. Yes, I, it is a shame. It is a very shame, and um, because it was so many of our chance, our only chance to be up and close with our NFL stars, and 
Um, it made me dream big of wanting to go to the Pro Bowl and then go to the Super Bowl. So I'm glad I got to do that. Um, Sean said supposedly 100 fans at that 90. Really? Only 100 fans um, at that, that UH uh, 92 Holiday Bowl. So um, how many times I wish as a UH fan I was there. Of course, I was too young. I couldn't make it happen. But as I talk, I talk about this with um, – with Dave Quata as well. So I'll continue playing this. But the games that got away, the games I wanted to go to, Kobe's last game. I had a chance. The price was getting higher. I was like, man, Kobe Bryant's last game. I get to be there. Nah, I guess I'll just watch it. Of course, I'll never forget watching that game even. I mean, it's incredible what Kobe did in that game. And now even more, I'm, I'm sad that I wasn't there and had the chance. Or LeBron, uh, you know, being the Warriors – and one of his greatest game, definitely, in, in his NBA career. I wish I could have been there, too. And I was watching them following that game. I was like, man, I can fly to Oakland. I could be there. Um, but those are the games as a hardcore sports fan I'm talking about that. Um, but Derek says there are way more fans than, than were there, than were 100 at that game, like Sean says. And that we're talking about the 92 Holiday Bowl. So were you there at the 92 Holiday Bowl? Some of you hardcore UH fans were there. And you might be there again at UCLA. Let's keep uh, this conversation with Dave Kawada going. You take in groups. What games have you gone to? What cities? Um, you know, our very first tour was the inaugural tour, 2012. So that was now, um, you know, August 2012. We went to started Padres Stadium, and my goal is to always group as many games together, right? So I was like, let's do a Padres Angels Dodgers, and we did that back to back to back, and UH versus USC Norm Chow's first game. So that's where we did. From there, we went to Denver. Uh, we've done a Friday night lights game where we went into, we went to Brenham, Texas to eat ice cream at, and over there and drink wine and then go to Friday night football where they were selling like moose pellets. And I was so confused, but like, it was such a crazy culture experience to be in like Texas on a Friday night in, in the middle of nowhere. So uh, Derek probably knows a little bit about this cause he's from Texas, but this is what I did in Hawaii sports trends, right? Hawaii played rice. Um, 2013, I believe. Shout out to Ben Jay, who was the AD, and I, I, I took a picture with him there, uh, my friend Ben Jay. But while we were there in Houston, we, we saw a game on Thursday. That was a Thursday night game, University of Houston versus UCF at Houston Stadium, which is a really cool stadium. And then we got to go and watch Rice play, and they play in a very famous stadium in Houston as well. And they have 75,000 seats, but only about – 5,000 fans, like legitimately. So this is what happened to rice football, which we don't want to happen to Hawaii football, but this is obviously different circumstances. But back in the day, rice, which is a very difficult academic school to get into as well. You know, they were in like the Southwestern conference and they were playing against like big teams like university of Texas, Austin and whatever. And now they're kind of just like hanging out in there as a mid major. So we did that. And then um, right outside of Houston, there's a city about uh, 70 miles, maybe. Uh, it's called Brenham. And if you eat Bluebell ice cream, mm, we went on a dairy tour there. And they have all these um, wineries that are like scattered in Texas. And you wouldn't think about it. But we did that. And it was just really cool to be out in the Texas you know, sunshine and um, in the fall and go to a Texas high school game. And like I said, it was confusing. People were trying to sell me all these things. Like, do you want to buy like moose pellets or like stuff that has to do with guns. And I was like, no, I honestly don't know what that is. I had to ask people like, what do you put that on a rifle? I'm so confused. So that literally was happening. And it was so fun because like, that's what I wanted. I wanted that Texas Friday night experience. I mean, we ate barbecue and, um, you know, it was really cool because I, I, it's not like anything we get in Hawaii, obviously it's nothing you get even in California, even in Florida, you know, Texas high school football is, is what it is, and I want to continue doing continue doing those things because uh, we have some even great stadiums to visit at, at the high school level, at least in Texas. So that's really cool. And that's what I wanted to do. You know, I've been to Sydney, Australia, and we went to Aotearoa first, New Zealand. We went to um, the Hobbiton to see the Hobbits, and that was all a part of our group going to UH game in Sydney. So, and while we were in Sydney, we went to a National Rugby League game there in Newcastle, which was really cool. On a great, and we got to go on the field after too, which was crazy. I didn't know that was going to happen. You know, like they're like, oh, the fans can come on the field. It's like, oh, cool. I'm going on the field. And we all went on the field. So, and all across the US, Vegas, Seattle, DC, like I said, we've now the Super Bowl in Miami, in Tampa, um, Texas, Ohio, Ohio State, Michigan to the big house now. But going to the big house, going to Ohio State and being, you know, in on the shoe and, 
um, being around, like seeing them dot the I, like those are the things that you see on TV and they're like, that's cool on TV. And then when you see an impression, you're like, man, I did it. I made it, you know, and that's ultimately what I want to bring that experience, you know. You know, obviously that Ohio dotting the I, they make the OHIO, that's a marching band, before Ohio State takes uh, the field. And that is, uh, you know, not just a tradition in Ohio State that is well known, but a tradition around college football that is well known. So to be able to be there and see, you know, they get that one last band member and he goes out there and he's the dot on the I in OHIO. So they say like OHIO. So that was really cool, OHIO, and to see that live. Um, at the Big House, Hawaii played as well. Um, Sean was there. That was 2016. I was there as well with Hawaii sports fans. And it was Michael Jordan at the Big House Day because that was the day that the University of Michigan um, signed their new contract with, uh, or they were they became the first jump um, Air, Air Jordan school. So now Nike doesn't do sponsorships, just Nike. Sometimes they do. But they still do, obviously. But at the high school, at the college level, it's actually getting less and less. And that's why Hawaii is Adidas right now. Um, that's not the only reason Hawaii is Adidas, because I would love Hawaii to be Nike. But uh, the Jump brand, which is Michael Jordan's offshoot of the Nike brand, or which is part of Nike, they uh, Michigan was the first school. So we were there as Hawaii. And we got the first turnover. We got an interception in the first play of the game. And then we scored three points. And then we gave up 63 points. But that was a good memory. So... Though that's what you can expect at Hawaii Sports Fan. Um, but even in the Super Bowls, like sitting there for that moment uh, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, it's crazy. I always use the Eagles because they're not even like close to being my favorite team. But being there to see them win the championship was really cool. You know, in that moment, I felt that energy of the Eagles fans who finally won that Super Bowl. And I just want to take groups now to Denmark, to Amsterdam, like all these wonderful countries. To yeah, so, well, I brought up the Denmark and Amsterdam because I just came from the Euro Cup game, which is really cool. And that's the next adventures I want to take. International soccer. We did international rugby already. That was really cool. But international uh, soccer would also be cool. Um, but like I said, that Eagles, hearing people sing Fly Eagles Fly, which is like the Philadelphia Eagles like theme song, fight song, and all the fans sing it. But hearing them sing it because they just won – the Super Bowl. That was really cool. That's a moment that is you only get one of, you know, and I, I always bring up the NFT thing, right? Non fungible token. Like these are items people, you know, collect things. Obviously, next to me, I have a collection of my bobbleheads. I have my photos. I have, um, you know, all kinds of things from games. Um, so those are those are memories. But those memories in your head those those feelings those goosebumps you know those are the ones that i take away and that's what you get when you um, you know attend these events that something you can't get just on television paris um and so that's the next level and that's how we're going to keep you know um taking this company to the next level is like making the adventures bigger and bigger and bigger um let the minutia though let the logistics of the of of making your dream come true let me take care of that you know and my expertise and um you know, quite frankly, I think it's great. I think I gave a good bargain too. Like we've gone to so many cool places and everybody loves when they go on the tour. Every Nobody regrets it. Everybody keeps that memory. You know, the thrill of all of my trips, none of them have ever worn off. You know, every Super Bowl, I can place myself back in my seat and, and remember what it feels like to take in the environment. Like sitting at Super Bowl 50 in Levi Stadium with Glenn Higa. Shout out, Glenn. He's probably watching this right now. He came with me. And he's a huge Bronco Good fan. And just you. seeing how happy he was to see the Broncos win a Super Bowl. It was like, as a, as a Bronco fan, like, it was cool. And I was like, man, as a fan, I want that experience. And I got it as a Chiefs fan. I literally got it just four years later. So um, those things are possible. You know? Wayne Koito with us, the founder of Hawaii Sports Fans LLC, taking groups to various sporting events around the world and not just University of Hawaii road games, but everywhere. Like, Wayne just mentioned Super Bowls, Euro League, you name it, different places to go. Now, mm -hmm. the one thing that sometimes people kind of shy away about planning something like this is the logistical elements of travel. How is it that you can kind of alleviate or even take that away to make the experience of going to see a sporting event on the mainland or wherever so much better? I think some of the logistics like you, you talked about, even... When it comes to Hawaii sports fans, and, and this is something I'm going to bring up with with uh, Dave, 
And I'm going to be honest, I do a lot of the interviews, right? So I'm behind the mic a lot. But I have to give credit to the people that I do interview because I don't get interviewed that often. So I forget what it's like to be on the other side. So sometimes I do ramble. Plus, I just ramble and, you know, in real life, if you know me. So it's hard to be contained sometimes. But Dave, uh, you know, this was great because ESPN, you know, really got to learn about what Hawaii Sports Fans does. And what I want to talk about is going to a game, the logistics of getting into a game, of, of, of getting into the parking lot, of getting out. Like, those can all be pains, right? And let, let Hawaii Sports Fans do that. Let, let them take away some of that pain. And let Hawaii Sports Fans, you know, be able to, uh, you know, make you just have a good time, make you only worry about just having a good time. And I have so many things that I'm excited about personally, yet I have some stress. I will say, of course, because when you're planning something, if you're, if you're a planner, you know there's always going to be stress behind something, right? There's always going to be like, oh man there's a cloud over this i wanted to get it over with even though i'm so excited about it happening it's like man there's going to be like this or this or this or this because that's how our brains work when you're planning something you don't have to worry about that though like if you come with hawaii sports fans you just get to come you just get to be right with us and that is uh, a really cool gift i think and i'm just saying that not just because you know i run hawaii sports fans but because i know as a fan what i would want and i didn't see it out there I didn't see it from any other companies. Do are there companies that take people to UH games? Yes, obviously. When there's been they're on television, they're on the news, they have an entire back page and the sports page, you know, of the advertiser. I can't afford that. Neither uh, am am I looking to do that because a lot of those groups take 60, 80, 100 or more people in the several hundred. Especially like guys like Panda. And if you are a type that likes that, I would go with them. I, I'm not Panda Travel or any of these other ones worldwide. They have their thing and they do it and they do it well. And I encourage people to continue because to, you know, if, if that's who you go with, keep going with them because they, they deliver the experience that you want. I want to help deliver an experience that you can't get anywhere else. And I know that these other companies aren't doing it because it would be crazy. It is crazy to leverage an entire or, you know, get an entire box like I'm doing at the Dodgers game, like I'm doing a suite at the, at the Angels game because there's so much risk involved. But I know I have I have faith in how much sports fans really love that experience. And even ones like me, even just ordinary fans, right? I'm not like a rich person. And I've said this over and over again. And I don't, this is a lot of that illusion, right? It's like, how can I help you get that experience that you would think only rich people could have, but let you get that as well. And that's what these Dodgers home run seats are. That's what that suite is. That's saying, you know what? You don't have to be rich and get it all. Let me just help you get in, and I'll, I'll help you pay a little bit to get in. And um, I wish I could have had that, you know, as from somebody else doing it. But instead, you know, I'm, I'm doing it myself, and it's even more fun because I get to go on all the trips myself too. So obviously I, 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 I don't want people thinking that it's, uh, you know, it's something that is a, a burden or at all on me because it's it's not at all. Obviously, I love doing this, but I there is stress behind everything, especially even doing the things that you love to do. There is stress behind it, and there are, there are logistics: getting people from the airport to the hotel, getting people to the stadium, and and that's you think that's easier, be, but there are a lot of barricades at most stadiums, so you you can't just drive up to the front gate. Um, some stadiums, they, they have a great Uber and Lyft pickup that will drop you off right at the front gate, you know, or um, there is a, a roundabout right in front of the Rose Bowl that sometimes they, they leave open. I'm not sure if they're going to do that again. But, you know, a lot of people don't know about what goes on around these stadiums, right? Or Dodger Stadium, which is very hilly, a huge. If you've ever parked at Dodger Stadium, it's really easy to lose your car. We're going to be in preferred parking. We're going to be right next to our section where we park. We're going to walk right into our section. So. I did that logistic ahead of time or I kind of solved the puzzle as much as I could because I'm still a little stressed out because even though it's going to go even better than I expected, as a planner, I'm going to have a little bit of stress, but I'm taking that all off of you and I want you to just have a great time. And I want to have a great time because I always do. Um, for instance, in the Yankee game we went to in the Bronx a couple of years ago, you know, there was an issue. There was security. There were people that... Um, we're making it difficult for my group. And it was good that I was able to intervene. I don't like to have to intervene, but let me let me be the person. You, I don't want people to have to talk. I don't want other people to have to, you know, sully their experience because they get involved in a confrontation or because 
they you know need to see the manager or something and that wasn't us we weren't being karens at all we're we're local people and i tell them i'm always proud of the way my group is i'm proud of the way that how we represent ourselves and carry our hawaii but we still have fun but we do it respectfully we do it uh with aloha and um you know i i i'm a fearless leader of that all i'm just it can be stressed a little bit but i want to be the person that you can rely on when you are on a trip and I just talked again to Shirley and Ray Miyamoto. They were uh, featured on our social media. They just had their 60th, 66th wedding anniversary, and they're coming back with us on Hawaii Sports Center. So their third trip. They went to L.A., they went to Seattle. They've done a lot with us, and they're already in their late 80s, and they wanted to re remind me that, uh, are they going to be the oldest on the trip, they asked. And actually, my grandfather is going to come. You know, my grandmother's husband, who I talk about, he's going to come to L.A., so he'll actually be the oldest, 89 years strong, um, he'll be on the trip as well, you know, making memories with us. And I'm excited about making memories with him, with my grandfather. And that's what it's all about. Have my groups be a part of the general area, general seating section. I want to be in like an exclusive private area. So it's like, and that's what? going to be unprecedented. But we had a box at the Mariners game a couple of years ago when UH played in Seattle at, at U Washington. And that was fun too. We stayed in Chinatown. So, we got um, to go to a Vietnamese restaurant after. I took him to a pho place. I introduced him to all of the, you know, the workers and we talked a little bit, but like, that's ultimately a Wayne Cueto thing. Like it's all about cross-cultural communication and just appreciation of travel and appreciation of, of the places that you are. And, you know, imagine this, we're in a van driving down Manhattan. We stayed in the theater row and we're going to the Yankee game, drive to the Bronx, drop them off. On the way, we're like singing Sinatra songs. And the one guy is wearing a Hitachi Matsui jersey. And I'm like, oh, that'd be crazy if Hitachi Matsui was there. And we were talking. And then that night we get there. Hitachi Matsui is not only there. He's like in the box next to us. So not our box. But we did have an exclusive area. But nobody in his area was even talking to him. They weren't even like, and we were blown away. So we were just walking around. And we're like, Hitachi-san, Asashin, Hitachi Matsui. Like, we're like asking him. Yeah, we were like. So that was crazy too. And like I, I talked about this, like I, how many celebrities we've seen on our tours. And Hideki Matsui was one of them at the Yankee game in the Bronx. He also played for the Angels. And I'm an Angels fan. I was an Angels fan when he played for the Angels as well. So it was like, wow, like this happened. And he was right there. And he was like, why are you speaking Japanese to me? Which was hilarious as well. But we we're only doing that to try and get around like the security there because there was so much security around him. But he was like the prop for like the box next to us. Like they're like, oh, you have Sadeki Matsui. They're like, cool. We're just like rich Manhattan socialites. So we're going to go to our beer and food, which we had on our side, but we didn't have Hideki Matsui. Um, but still we had access to him, which was really cool. So that's just a part of that Hawaii sports fan. Just like, you never know what's going to happen. Pictures and stuff. It was hilarious. <laughs> and, um, you know, like that, like that always happens. There's always something that pops up to for my groups. And that's just the magic of Hawaii sports fans that I can't explain. Um, you know, like when we went to uh, Super Bowl 50 and we were in, um, the NFL live, there was a VIP section. I don't know why I just walked in and they're like, Oh, come in. Literally, it was um, Andrew Zimmern, the, the food host guy, and um, what's his face? The Dallas Cowboys running back from like the 670s. Um, you know who I'm talking Dorset? about? Tony Dorsett. So it's just yeah. him and Dorsett. And now. For real, that was a little crazy. Tony Dorsett is sitting in this room, he's extremely tipsy. Um, because you know it's the Super Bowl weekend, and so he's partying like everybody else is there. Like when you go to the Super Bowl with us too, you're gonna see like all these just like random players, celebrities. I remember seeing Lovey Smith when he was just hired. No, not Lovey Smith. Um, who was just hired as the Browns coach and then got fired. But uh, Super Bowl Fifty, I walked up to him and congratulated him, and it was just cool. Like you see all this NFL royalty. I remember in Phoenix just seeing like Goodell. Like, Goodell get out of his nice, like, SUV, black SUV, get out and walk to his hotel, and then a fan stop him, like, just some, like, average Joe. And actually, Goodell engage him and talk to him, which I appreciate about Goodell. I mean, he gets paid a ridiculous amount of money. So he should engage every fan that – that um, he basically gets paid a million dollars a week. So he, he could do whatever – you know, he, he could be a little bit more genuine with the fans, and I think he is. But that's the kind of thing that you get at the Super Bowl. So – that's about that experience as well. That was crazy. Andrew Zimmern, who went to Vassar, like me, 
uh, he was in there too. He was the host of a lot of food shows. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. Tony Dorsett. He was really so, super nice. Um, I think it's Danny White, right? If you're a Cowboys fan, you would know that it was Danny White of the, the Cowboys. But um, that's who um, Siri, who came to a lot of tours, came on two Super Bowls with Hawaii sports fans. That's who she really liked. And he just happened to be in that room. So, right, when you have the energy is right, things will happen. Things come to you. And that always happens to us at Hawaii sports fans. It's like, how did I get in this room? And like, they're like, oh, come in. Here's your group. Take pictures. And like one girl in my group was a huge. And she was a fan from, you know, the Cowboys back in the day, Jack White. And so she talked about so seeing Dorset was really cool. It's like, I couldn't have even set that up. You know, it's like, that just happened. But that's the kind of thing. If you just put yourself in a situation, you have to get yourself off the couch. You got to get yourself out the door. And I know these people. Like I said, I'm local. I'm Hawaiian. I'm a local brother. I got grandpas and uncles who are that type who are like, nah, 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 nah. I'm just going to stay home. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just going to stay on the couch. Like, no can if you want to make those crazy adventure dreams come true. You got to get on the plane. You got to, you got to just go all out. So, I understand that that alone is already tough. But if I was to say to you, here's a total price, that's all you got to pay and nothing, you know, you got to worry about. I think that's pretty good, you know, honestly, because I, I, there is a lot of headache that goes into all of it. And I do want people to maximize their time because, hey, some people you're going to be spending for NFL game, you know, over $100, $200 just to get into some game sometime. Like, I'm like, hey, let's spend another hundred or two and really make that experience that uh, one that we'll never forget. And that really is at the at, at another thing that's at the core. And I want people to understand that, like, why Hawaii sports fans is because let, let let's do something together as a group that will and get our stadium experience to the next level. You know, like I I've been to some stadiums so many times that I I'm gonna forget, right? Like. I remember the time, though, I go to Angel Stadium 15, 20 times a year, right? So it's like, I'm oh, there's so many games. Just like Aloha Stadium, right? How many games have I been to? I, I haven't missed a home game for UH football since 2007 season, right? Since I lived, and even not living in Hawaii full-time, I still go back home for every home game. So I it starts to get repetitive sometimes, though, because I, I, start, I start forgetting some games because it's kind of the same experience, which I love being in the front row, being with my friends, and I don't want to give it up. But at the same time, what? how can I make something more memorable? Right? Like uh, when I, anytime I've gone to a suite, for instance, right? Suite at the Mariners game. I've been to a game at T-Mobile Park in Seattle before with my friend who lives in Kent, Washington. But I don't remember who they were played. I don't remember too much about the game except like it was empty-ish. You know, it was just like an experience and it was cheap, right? Like, and then that's sometimes I do that still now, right? I'm just like, just get me in. That's me most of the time. This is not, it's not waiting quite to like always be like, okay, I'm going to be a baller every single game. Oh my gosh. Like, no, I'm not. That's why. So I'm not always sitting in like amazing seats. I'm trying to get into games, trying to maximize my dollar most of the time. And actually, no, I'm trying to maximize my dollar all the time. I take that back. I'm an economist. That's what we do. We, we think of the mar margin and we, we do, we, we look to operate optimally and most efficiently. So if I'm going to a game, right, and I can make the experience even better by adding maybe another $100 to it, let's do that. Let's not just leave with a med mediocre experience because you didn't want to pay all that the money. And, that's, and, and this is somebody who pays the least amount to get into baseball games at least you know 98 percent of the time but i'm saying this is your chance to maybe splurge but take your experience to the next level how many people have in la especially dodger fans have gone to dodger games their whole lives you know and basically sat in the same section so you know but i remember going with my friends from college uh dennis and katie i remember when they uh when we went to the game together in and sat in the right field where they had an all-you-can-eat. And that was a cool experience. And Dodgers still do that. We're going to have an all-you-can experience, but it won't. It'll be a bigger menu than what they get over there. And we'll be sitting down and they'll bring a service. So I'm going to, of course, remember this upcoming experience. But back then, I remembered it too because it was so different. And that's what we want to bring. I want to bring you that different experience at Hawaii Sports Fans. And sometimes you can only do that with a group. I mean, because that's the only way you're going to be able to afford to do it. You know, that's the kind of thing that you can do when you have a group. I can start going into boxes. I can start going into um, special exclusive areas because 
I can, you know, finally leverage a lot of people coming with me, but you can't do that alone. Trying to limit the amount of you walk, for instance, like the NFL will create a massive perimeter around stadiums just to ensure security. So um, they don't always have, you know, ways for people or kupuna to be able to make it, you know, it's like you got to walk or whatever. So, you know, it's nice to have somebody like me who has helped, you know, get golf carts, who has been in cargo elevators, whatever to assist people in my group. So, you know, obviously in my group, I'm going to have people from, you know, I would say 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. They're very, still very young at heart and still with a lot of, of energy. And that's the thing. It's like, you've already worked your life to do this. Like, let me just take over for you, plan mm -hmm. this trip, help you have a really amazing time and also not have to worry about it all. Like, you yeah. So like I said, you know, I have the young at heart and I have, you know, people who have been working their whole lives doing the same thing, waiting for the next trip. Let this be that trip. You know, that's what we're doing here. I'm excited to have two or three octogenarians on this next trip, three people in their late 80s. And it's fun because their spirit is so fun to be around. It's so fun to um, talk to people who have so much life left in them, but have so much wisdom and so many stories to share. And that's what happened, you know, with the Miyamoto's the last time. We talked about, you know, life in Hawaii in the plantation era. And that can only happen when you have, you know, people that live through that. And it, it was a really great experience, you know, to, to, to have so much different diversity and voices and, and kupuna, elderly, who, you know, add so much to the conversation and, and that sports experience. You've already earned the money. You've already, like, you know, for a lot of people, you've already tightened the strings for a long time, for decades, just waiting for something. So now's a chance to wait. So for anybody that has that sports bucket list and you want to, you know, cross it off, let me know, too. I mean, I'm always down to create tours around you know, um, what people want to do. You know, I've done that with NFC championships, like just a bunch of Seahawks fans that wanted to go to Seattle. I got to go to two NFC championships there. We sat in the Hawks nest. I, I don't want to say I'm picky. I go to any game, but I get picky when it comes to like, if you want to make something experience, I want, I want to help people remember the games. Like remember when UH played in Sydney, Australia, of course, no one's going to forget that, but we're going to be like, we were there, you know, mm -hmm. and we were, you know, petting koalas the night before. And it's, I want people to be able to say that, you know, have it is quite the experience to pet a koala, by the way. First of all, they are super, super soft. And they just eat eucalyptus all day. And the eucalyptus gives them, like, um, you know, euphoric vibes. So they're, like, chilling the whole time while you're petting them. But had UH not gone to Sydney, Australia, I don't know when I would go to Sydney. And I love traveling. Like I said, I've been all over the world. I've been to over 20 countries. I just came back from five, you know. And... Um, I, I'm just like, wow, I'm so glad Hawaii played in that game. I'm so glad Hawaii decided to play Cal in Sydney. And even though that was a very stressful trip as well, and I, and I took people, I had a group, which made it even more stressful. It was so memorable. And, and that is a gift, you know, to be able to go to these places and experience so many things and see your favorite team play too. Even if we lost, it was Coach Rolovich's first game, Nick Rolovich. Um, so it was a good memory. Be able to tie their own personal memory with, you know, a trip too. What is the next uh, trip that you have planned on the agenda? And how can people get on, get some information and sign up for it? Well, hisportsfans.com or highsportsfans.com is the website. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, find our next tours and also our future tours on the website right now uh but we have the uh game is going to play at ucla at the rose bowl we've already done this before um but the last time we weren't sitting in the special seats we're sitting in at dodger stadium we're gonna sit in the home run seats there was a sports center i don't know if you saw where a kid like got hit with cheese and it splattered all over him so i'm not saying this is going to happen to you but that was we're sitting in literally those exact seats and that's how crazy i mean you you're one of the few people that has a legit shot of catching uh you know a dodger home run for one thing Plus, you, all, you get all you can eat Dodger dogs, all you can eat food. So that's that experience. And on that same trip, besides Hawaii and UCLA at the Rose Bowl, we're going to have an Angels suite. I'm an Angels fan, a huge Angels fan. I was there when Otani was announced. I was there at Angel Stadium, um, you know, because I just loved having him from the very mo first moment. And now he's become a major phenomenon. And I think he's also an attraction. But 
We're going to have the angel suite. That's literally the suite that's looking down on, on um, the third baseline right onto their suite. So it'll be really fun uh, there. Wow. So that's you on hisportsfans.com, ESPN 1420. Dubbed it the I Love LA Tour. So I'm going to give it a shout out to ESPN 1420 because you might hear that one's been on there too. Um, but yeah, we got the Super Bowl tour. I'm always, you know, my goal is Super Bowl tours forever. And so it's like whenever people think about Super Bowls, I want them to think about coming to Hawaii sports fans. And, you know, I have a lot of people that, um, you know, never thought it was possible, but I just like, here, I give you a single price. I'm going to make it happen from flying in and going to little Havana in Miami and eating key lime pie on the beach in Hollywood, Florida to going to Super Bowl 54 to flying right back home after the game on a 2 a.m. flight. Like, you know, all of those logistics are possible and you can get back to work on time if you're that much of a workaholic, you know? <laughs> that was a real itinerary. <clears throat> you know, people that wanted to get, like, our friend Brandy, shout out to Brandy. She came on that Super Bowl tour. It was in Miami. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl 54. Arrived, left Honolulu Friday. Um, you know, got in on Saturday. Got to get some great Cuban food. Got to chill out in the hotel a little bit. Uh, see some little bit of uh, Miami highlights here and there. Get some key lime pie on the beach. Just enjoy like a little bit of the, the Florida air. The next day is Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Get some food in the morning. Go to the game. As soon as the game's over, celebrate. It's already 10, 11 p.m. Go straight to the airport. 2 a.m. flight. Fly back to Hawaii from Miami. I mean, that's cool. And I say that I, I you don't want to rush every trip especially if you're flying, you know, eight, nine, ten hours to go somewhere. But if you are in a time constraint, there are ways to do things. And you know what? She's always going to remember that. Brandy is always going to remember that for the rest of her life, right? Being there for the Super Bowl, seeing the Chiefs win. She was wearing a Chiefs jersey as well, which is cool. But that is only possible sometimes if someone else has that perspective. If someone else can show you, hey, it's possible. So it's been cool as people have been telling me like, hey, I would not have known I could have done this had I you know, not heard of Hawaii sports fans. <laughs> so anything that people want to do, though, um, any UH game, uh, Oregon State, obviously any Rams, I'm going to have the Rams experience the best four seats. They're right on the visiting team tunnel. So if, you're a Ram, if your team is playing the Rams, you can be right on their tunnel. It's the sixth row, actually. Um, so you're looking right down into the – it's in the club, wider seats cushion so that's the next level experience at SoFi which is already the greatest stadium in the world it's really amazing what SoFi Stadium is like so that's on the website it comes with parking those are all the things that you're not going to want to worry about so mm. I already got the parking I already got the seats you already I'm you have access to me for 24 7 to ask any questions so that's the next thing I also have Kansas City Chiefs tickets you know this is a part of the get to know Wayne Coit a little bit series so I have seats right on the Kansas City Tunnel. You can see Mahomes, my boy, come right out of the tunnel. So <laughs> I'm very excited about that. But hisportsfans.com, like I said, I'm also live streaming every Wednesday on our Facebook, and it's posted to our YouTube as well. So search Hawaii Sports Fans, um, and you'll find it. But um, I, I just want to be continuing to or continue to connect with, you know, our fans because, you know, when these big things come down the pipeline that we want to go to, like the World Cup in Qatar or wherever. We can just say, like, hey, guys, let's do this. Let's go. So that's the goal. So I hope you can join us, hisportsfans.com. Awesome. Hey, I'm a Rams fan. I may be calling you up for one of those. So that's pretty awesome. No. Wayne Corto, founder of Hawaii Sports Fans LLC, taking people. So that was really cool. Uh, being able to uh, talk to Dave Kawada there, being able to share about Hawaii Sports Fans. But like I said, this is something that I want to continue doing. It's our 10th year already. We've had amazing, amazing tours, 23, I think, tours already, uh, six Super Bowls. We've been all over the place, and I, we're taking it to the next level with L.A., and I want you to, to be a part of this for the future as well because, like I said, maybe there's something you've always thought about going to. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm drinking out of my Yeti here, my, out of my UH Basketball 100 Seasons Cup. But um, anyways, I just want to drop that. Shout out to Hawaii basketball. Um, you know, I'm wearing the jersey too, even the U.S. jersey. But like say when Hawaii basketball plays in the NCAA tournament next year, right? Because they're going to win the Big West. There's only a little bit of time that you can get from the selection show to, you know, getting on a plane. And usually it's like two days. So a Hawaii sports fans, what I'm trying to do hopefully is get people who are 
you know, thinking, anticipating going to these events as well, saying like, hey, if Hawaii makes it here, I'm in. Or if, you know, like for me personally, when I was like, if Venus plays Serena in Australia, I'm going to go. And that's when I went. Australian Open in Melbourne in 2017 because it was Venus versus Serena. And, uh, you know, that's Serena's last major victory even too. So uh, it, it, it's it's a game that even more for me is more special that I got to be at. But I want to always remember these things because have that significance tied to it as well. But it's always fun when you can introduce more people to this way of life. Um, but HI sports fans, that was, that's what we're doing. Mahalo to everybody that's been reaching out that has been, you know, um, adding their list or their name to our email list. Please continue to connect with us. I'm always accessible myself uh, via social media, via the Hawaii sports fans channels. Uh, Mahalo Bradley as well for listening. He says, listening any, everywhere he goes, Hawaii sports fans is there. And that's right. We can be heard on our podcast of the Hawaii sports fans channel on Spotify, on Apple, on Podbean, on Audible. Go look for the Wayne Coito show on the Hawaii sports fans channel where you'll also find the rainbow wrap up, a brand new podcast. Looking forward to doing another episode of that tomorrow. Maybe brother Shane can join La La Head. Uh, we'd love to have his perspective. Mahalo for joining us for another show. Please uh, continue to share that light and that kindness with others because uh, it's definitely needed in the world right now. Hope to talk to you all soon. Aloha.